Oh, me hearties, a very good morning to you. It is me, Scotty McClure. And we are, of course, live on the big one, Facebook Live, Thursday. Thursday Thoughts, good morning and a very warm welcome if you've just joined us. I hope you're well. You will have just joined us because I've just joined you. And I think that is absolutely incredible. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to have you with us. So much to talk about today. And of course, as always, so little time to do it in. Do you find that these pop-ups, the time absolutely flies? Gordon Roberts has joined us. Kareem Zachariah, Paul G. Curry. Good morning, Scotty. How are you? Good morning, Paul. And Dinky do. Who was first this morning? This Larry Donaldson, Gordon Robertson. Good morning. Very very quick. James Scally just in, but uh, Gordon the first with the chat this morning. Excellent stuff. Uh, your colour coordinated today. I see. Yes, absolutely. Everything matches my face. So there we go. <laughs> We're in blue. It's wonderful. Uh, I am a blue boy today. Um, how's the lighting looking? Is everything bright enough? Can you see okay? Because um, what we've got, sometimes we have uh, a little problem with getting all the balance right and that sort of thing. So there we are, colour coordinated. And welcome, welcome, welcome now. Have you told everybody, have you told 10 to tell 10? Let's get sharing right away, guys. And uh, you'll see I've got a slight change today. You'll find I look down a lot. Well, I had a wizard wheeze. And my wizard wheeze was that we raise the other device so that we're actually up on the level. You can't beat me on the level, I say. Uh, so there we are. Excellent stuff. Craig Mitchell's watching. Thank you, dear Craig. And a very, very warm welcome from me, Scotty McClue, to every single one of you. If you've just joined us and you're wondering, what on earth is this? It's the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and of course, the world's most humble man, just saying hi to every one of you. Excellent stuff. Tell 10 to tell 10, let everybody know. Um, share from the off is my motto now. Share right from the very off. So what I'll do is I'll share with the big Scotty McClure groups. And if you can all do the same, guys, that will let them know what is what. So we're off to the Scotty McClure page right away and get that shared. And there should be a lot less looking down. So you should be seeing a lot less of the tap of the bonnet. Marvellous. Morning, Scotty. Nice to see you, says Craig Mitchell. Good morning. Your bonnet's casting a shadow. Have you changed the lighting? Where are you getting the shadow? Oh, here. I don't think that's the bonnet. I think that just needs... No, I haven't changed the lighting per se. Um, we maybe just need to light that little bit. I'm just wondering, does that help at all? That sort of idea. The shadow. Anyway, we can live with a shadow, you know. I mean, I've spent my life living in the shadows, as you know. Kenny Gray, Dinky Do, hi from Glen Rothes. Says the wonderful Martin Byrne. Hi from Glen Rothes, Glen Roths, the home of the roundabout. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Do. Excellent stuff. Glen Rothes, Fife. You have to sup with a long spoon when you're supping with your Pfeiffer. <laughs> Where does all that nonsense come from? And then, of course, we've got people watching in Dunfermline. And we know that the king sits in Dunfermline too. What is the king doing as he sits in Dunfermline too? That's today's big question. So there you are. The lights are good, Scotty McClure shared. How's the dog today? The dog's wonderful. He's been out for a lovely, lovely walk. He is such a wee gent. So there you are. Just a wee gent. Everything is everybody else comes before that dog. So I put him in there as first, as number one. The kind of wee gent that would stand back and say, eh, do you want my dinner? You have it. <laughs> that stuff, just the most gorgeous nature. If there were more people like my little dog and like a lot of other little dogs and big dogs, then eh, what a wonderful world we would have. The wonderful Royston Mayo's watching. Good morning, sir. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. One of the country's top 
producers. So there you are, wonderful. A television man. And a television man, if there's nothing that that man does not know about television, and he could advise me about uh, commercial television. So there we are. So there you go, Royston. Because we've got an idea for a program, half an hour live, late on a commercial network, late on a Friday night, 11.30 till midnight, something like that. How's that for scheduling? I'm in Falkirk, says Barry Carty. Good morning, Barry. We love Falkirk. Dinky do the tap of the tune. Morning, Scotty. John Johnston there. Excellent stuff. Richie McCusker's watching. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome. So much to get through, guys. And as always, so little time to do it in. I couldn't believe if you hadn't reminded me yesterday, I wouldn't have realized we'd been on an hour. Seems like five minutes. Blair Mackay. Morning from Loch Ness, Scotty. I hope all well's doing with you. Well, yes, all is as well as can be. And thank you very much for that. Are you in lockdown in Loch Ness? Where are you? I'm trying to think of all the wonderful places that I know in Loch Ness. Uh, there's the wonderful Dave Shearer in Australia. It must be late at night. Fa what a fantastic guy. And the same to you, dear boy. Lovely to know that you are there. Dave Shearer, one of the finest broadcasters and a great programmer and scheduler. Wonderful radio manager um, out in Oz there, out in Australia. Michael Yule, Dinky Do, Ali Bryson, Dinky Do, Barry Carty says good morning, Erin Foy. Morning, Scotty. Dinky do. Absolutely, Aaron Foy. A big dinky do to you. Lovely to have you with us. Dave Shearer is laughing his head off. He does not realize himself just how good he actually is. That's what he's laughing at. So there we are. Stephanie Lavelle. Good morning, Scotty. You big darling. Thank you, Stephanie. Mwah. Bless you. Um, Lewiston and Drumna Drocket, sir. I know Drumna Drocket. Very, very well. What a fine part of the world. I told you the other day about the bus driver that had taken us over from uh, from the East Coast. And um, I said, the West Coast roads aren't quite what the East Coast roads are. And he went, well, you've water on one side and rock on the other. <laughs> said, your East Coast roads are a lot straighter. Whoa. And when we passed another bus, you could feel the wind whistling. Mark Kelsey, thank you do. Uh, Ali Bryson, good morning, Scotty, from Ochen Lake, the birthplace of Red Cola. Now, um, I'm just wondering who Red Cola was. Was this some kind of uh, early socialist? <laughs> <laughs> Only teasing. Uh, wonderful stuff. Well, it's got a nice to start the day with a friendly voice. I thank you. You obviously have a very friendly voice. Blair Mackay, lol. Morning all. I hope you're well and safe from Justin, Brazil. I don't think Justin's in Brazil, but he is Justin, Brazil. And we welcome you, Justin. Welcome, welcome. Absolutely. We're keeping safe. Um, if I can just do a little bit, if you'll indulge me for a second, I was very, very saddened yesterday to hear of the passing of a man called Jerry McHugh. And a lot of you watching will have known Jerry. He will have touched your lives at some point. He was the head of mathematics at Notre Dame High School in Greenock. And uh, he... Uh, sadly succumbed to the coronavirus uh, last week. So if anybody's watching that knows Jerry, I've paid tribute on Facebook and on Twitter, along with, oh, a massive amount of you. There were pieces on Scottish television, on the BBC, um, on uh, all the newspapers, The Sun, The Daily Record, fantastic man and I was very very privileged to have met him to have worked with him and to have been in his company and he was a big Manchester United fan and as you know when I broadcast on Century Radio Man U was right at the back of me just across the canal from Media City so Requiescat in Patchy, rest in peace Jerry McHugh a fine fine man your spirit your warmth, 
your laughter, your wise counsel, your wisdom will all carry on through all the myriad young people that you taught and changed their lives. Thank you, Jerry. There we are. Um, a big clap for Tom Moore. 12 million inspiration and dinky do, says John Jones. John Jones, I can't believe this. Somebody said last night, you'll have to go some, Scotty, to keep up with the captain. I said, yes, but I do have another th 36 years in which to do it. Karim Zachariah was starting to uh, be at the peak of this virus and people are losing lives and loved ones and media and radio seem to be going about relax the lockdown or after lockdown we don't know when it will end what have we got to you sorry we don't know when it will end yes and we should not dare rush into it because we don't want new cases and the spread again for a second lockdown to be implemented media etc need to be responsible with your reporting people with mental health and uh, difficult lives depend on it and lives depend on it absolutely kareem you are quite right they need to be very, very switched on. The wonderful Marcus Myers is watching. What a top man. You have a, a top mother. You have a, a top grandmother. And your late grandfather and I were great chums. So there you go, Marcus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please convey love to your lovely family and tell them that Scotty McClure is saying dinky do to every one of you. Lovely to have you with us. Who else we got? Stephanie Lavelle says, my teacher, an amazing man. Stephanie, wonderful. The people that knew Jerry, the people who that man's lives has touched and he was just filled with joy. Everybody else came before Jerry, couldn't do enough for you and i was just so privileged to have known him dave anders is watching sorry i'm not from brazil i dare say i'm from down south justin you must get fed up with dafties like me making funny cracks about that you know brazil where the nuts come from that was um charlie's aunt wasn't it charlie's aunt from brazil where the nuts come from uh, mary lindsay Craig Boyd, have you watched the three-part program called Quiz on STV? Craig Boyd, I am a bit of a television fiend, a television buff. Terrible. It comes from, I think, having worked in television for so many years. And, um, you know, you watch, you end up watching certain things. I mean, a bit like the license trade. I remember a wonderful publican friend of mine saying, Scott here. You can't be a seller and a consumer. So he just had very little to drink in his life and he ran a wonderful pub. Um, you know, and I think with television, we used to say, now don't get caught up in stuff because you've got work to do. But it was wonderful. We would do all our work. And then if there was something really good, which there very often was, of course, something fantastic, because the beauty of working for uh, ITV was that it was 15 separate television companies, and they all gave the best of their programming to the network, and you got to see the lot. That's why we're Coronation Street and Emmerdale and all these wonderful programs. Did you see the last part of Quiz last night? It made you think about the defense case. Of course, Jack. And, um, you know, it said that uh, the couple maintain their innocence. I loved the defense solicitor. That was, was that Helen McCrory? It, she was, uh, I mean, just fantastic. Um, the Mars family say hello, says the wonderful Marcus. Marcus, hello to you and dinky do. And tell Uncle Scott I'm asking for him as well. And give mum a big hug and grandma. Um, I'm the Chief Knot, says Justin Brazil. <laughs> Fantastic, Justin. Welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Um, Spike McCarthy says, uh, a big hello to my mum. She's working hard. Spike McCarthy, of course, we'll say hello to your mum. I have to say all the people uh, united and doing things to raise the spirits of people make me proud of our entire country. Justin, 
There is so much to be proud of. But I was absolutely floored that um, some real half-witted, dreadful people were abusing health workers. That is shocking. Scotty, we have to remain positive, and the Tories should be giving at least some ideas of how things could be in times ahead. So business can make provisional plans in the event they get the green light at the end of the tunnel. It's important for mentality. Yes, everybody. Now, yesterday, I hope I wasn't misconstrued because I said, don't buy in. Headley McCarthy's watching. Don't buy in too much to the lockdown thing. That came out probably not the best way. Of course you're buying into the lockdown. Of course you're remaining at home unless you're a key worker. Of course you're staying safe and you're staying indoors. That's not at all in dispute. What I meant is don't buy too much into all the negativity. And it's very difficult not to do, but you must keep yourself positive. And I've lost so many dear friends through this coronavirus, but I do not want to reduce my lightheartedness and my comedy. And none of these friends would have me do that either. That's the whole thing, because we must keep up our levity. We must raise our spirits. That's one of the reasons, you know, I know it's not much, but that's one of the reasons I like to pop up in the morning to see if we can get everybody together for an hour for a right good chat, right? Uh, thanks, a big shout out to Wallace Court in Eldersley. Wallace Court, the birthplace of Sir William Wallace. Not actually in the flats itself, in the house itself, of course, but uh, the birthplace of Sir William Wallace, Eldersley. One of my very early broadcasts, I talk about this. Um, I can't wait, when I say early broadcasts, when I was about 14. <laughs> I can't wait to go back to work. My paintbrushes are worn out. Justin, are you a decorator? I told you I was sweating terribly when I was doing some painting. And the wife said, you know, what are you doing? No wonder you're roasting hot. Look at you. And it said, I said, it says on the can, put on two coats. Scotty, do you think the syndicate for who wants to be a millionaire never stopped? Would they still be running to this day? Well, Jack, you see, what you've got now that you probably didn't have then, um, or certainly not to any great extent, is search engines. And you can search things up very, very quickly. And when I was at the absolute height of the radio phone, well, almost at the height, the height is still to come. My moment's still coming, rest assured. So I hope everybody was nice to me on the way up, right? <laughs> because they might be meeting me on the way up, on the way down. Uh, good morning, Scotty Dinky Do. So the wonderful David Howie, Nicky Graham. How are we? Uh, Gordon Stullings watching Dinky Do. Um, I remember a guy saying to me, and I knew I had a job with Nation Radio lined up. This was just uh, a few months ago. And he was saying, Who's going to give you a job, for goodness sake, you old so-and-so? And I knew I had the job, and then a week later, he had to eat his words. Oh, and there are new radio stations starting up in Scotland. So there you are. Over here in the USA, we're praying for you over there. God bless. Denise D. Nelson. Over here in the UK, we pray for America. Hands across the sea. We love you guys. I want Scotty McClue to be across America. Uh, what's good for a hangover, Scotty? Stop drinking. Perfect. There we are. Ali Bryce or Scotty, I find it amusing when I see people getting confused on the Paisley Road West Ralston boundary as the house numbers go from 3,000 and the next is 400. Lovely. So there you are. So you can have a several number. I had um, an old aunt who stayed up 1264 Paisley Road West. 1264. Wonderful. Famous property overlooking the Bella Houston Park. It was lovely. Uh, is that not disputable? I heard there are a few birthplaces 
of William Wallace. Well, apparently he hid under the Cadger's Bridge in... Uh, now, what's, what's the wee place down... Uh, and the guy used to ring me from it. The Cadger's Bridge. Oh, my goodness. On the way down the Carlisle Road from Edinburgh. Bigger. The Cadger's Brig in Bigger. Yes. No, I think William Wallace was born in Eldersley. Uh, a drop of what you drank last night, says Justin. We love you guys also, says Denise T. Nelson. Lovely Denise T. Nelson. Where are you? Do tell. Karen Woodrow, welcome. Sean Goodsell, welcome. Lovely to have you all with us. Guys, can we do some massive sharing? We need to tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10, to tell 10. You can have the most fantastic show in the world. And I would argue that this is the most fantastic show in the world. Not on any television or radio at the moment. Will you get anything of this quality? Scott McClure, have you ever had a paranormal experience? Yes, Kareem Zachariah, I have. Uh, I'm a very, very, very sensitive man to things. And things come into my mind and then I find out why. And I very often think of people not long before they pass away. And a friend of mine once said to me, he said, son, can you not think about me? You know, that's a but it's when they're actually passing away. And I can remember having a conversation with my mother about the late Sir Alec Douglas Hume. And I was telling a lovely story about Alec. He was an exceptionally nice man, uh, a wonderful foreign secretary. And uh, I can remember t uh, talking to my mother about it. She said, oh, uh, yes, is he still alive? And I said, I think only just. And I think he died the next day. So there we are. Shock, shock, says Ali Bryson. No, Ali, I've never, ever, ever been a shock jock. That's the interesting thing. I've never been a shock jock. And that was a label that the press had to put on me uh, to try and ascertain what sort of stuff I do. But I've never been a shock jock. And we've talked about very, very controversial things. But it's to the good. If you look at every single one of these things that I've raised, it's all to the good. It has raised the plight of these people. So there we are. So uh, no, there's no shock jock at all. That was just a, a label at the time. Shock jocks were very fashionable in America. And I was the UK's, branded the UK's first shock jock. But there was never anything shocking. Uh, so we're talking about the um, paranormal there. Uh, yes, Kareem, one night I was working uh, uh, in my house and uh, it was late. Um, I mustn't have been on the radio that night, so it was probably a weekend and I was working late uh, on a very early uh, computer. I don't know if I was on the internet. I may have been. Um, but it was it was certainly very early days. It was more of a word processor, and I was writing. And it was very late at night, and then I just suddenly got very cold, shivery cold, and I was drawn to the centre of the room. And I couldn't see anything, but I knew there was something there. And it was quite troubling, and I said, and you might think I'm mad, but this is what happened. I said, who are you? And what can I do for you? And there was an immediate relaxation. There was an immediate sort of uh, thawing of the chill. And then another night I was in the same uh, room. And uh, as you know, I could not be a bigger fan of Kenneth McKellar, sadly, the late Kenneth McKellar, beautiful tenor voice, wonderful ambassador for Scotland. And uh, I put on his sacred songs. And one of them is a little hymn called Do No Sinful Action, Speak No Angry Word, Ye Belong to Jesus, Children of the Lord. And I got a vice-like grip round the back of my neck. Get that off, as if somebody was squeezing the back of my neck, get that off. So I'm assuming that this was some spirit, I think female, who may have lost a child. It wasn't in the house because it wasn't an old house. 
It was in the land. So there you are. It was something in the land. And then I can remember a girlfriend staying. And um, I went back in. I was late finishing. I went in and I said, how are you? And she said to me, there's something very strange in this house. She was sensitive as well. So there, I don't know if that answers your question. I don't know if I did the right thing. So there we are. Uh, yes, Ali, but uh, very good. Do you think the Edinburgh folk are paranormal? Says Gordon Robertson. Gordon. 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 You naughty boy. Where would we be without you, Murray? Edinburgh. Uh, Scotty, you demand, says Paul Mac, only joking, Edinburghers. Um, they know me well because I broadcast Edinburgh for many, many years. One for David Lafferty is watching. Good morning, David. Uh, Justin says, what have you been doing to keep yourself occupied during lockdown? Justin, supposing the lockdown went on for a thousand years, I would never complete all the things I have to do. So there you are. So I work all the time from indoors in the house. I have, um, the house is groaning with books, but I also have a lot of work to do as well for other things. And I've got writing to do. I've got a book half finished. There we are. Um, what made you choose uh, that, uh, Ali? Because uh, we moved to another station and we wanted to make that a bit more interesting uh, when my grand passed i seen her shadow standing at the door of my bedroom i just moved into my flat and she never got the chance to see it was this the door of your bedroom in the flat kareem right i want to know and your friend that passed away last week and um, what did he do for a living Scotty, although we're closed for business, we're still digitally open. I got an inquiry this morning. I've got a 2003 Nissan Micra with 300,000 miles on the clock and three weeks MOT. How much is it worth? I replied, depends how much petrol's in it. Actually, that's the kind of car I would have a look at because after 300,000 miles, You've probably ironed out any of its little quirks. And that is a very, very good car. I drove one and it was very, very reliable. I'll no sleep tonight now, says Gordon Robertson. Woo! Gordon Robertson. So there you are. No, I think very often there are unhappy spirits about that get disturbed. And I think that we are. You see... The whole concept of radio, a microphone, a transmitter, and a receiver, all right? A microphone, a transmitter, and receiver. That's your basic radio chain. That's how we love it. That's how it's so fantastic. I've loved it since I can remember, right? And it was very big in my grandfather's generation. He was born in 1881. The radio to him was a miracle. He remembered it starting. And he loved his radio right up till he was 89. He would not come down and watch the news on television. He put it on in his room upstairs on his bush radio and listened to the six o'clock news. And we used to hear the pips, boop, boop, boop. And then uh, you would get the uh, you know, BBC radio news at six o'clock. Uh, so there we are. He would listen to that. Then he would come down at 10 o'clock at night and he had a pocket watch that was very, very accurate. And when Big Ben struck for the national news on television, he would take out his pocket watch, consult and say, I, they're not bad tonight. They're pretty well spot on. <laughs> that was him. And my friend's grandfather used to say, I'm just going to the lavatory. Don't put on the 10 o'clock news till I come down. <laughs> I found one of the paintbrushes not worn out. I guess it's time to use that. There's me thinking I'd hidden it. Ah, Justin. Take care. All the best. Please, all of you, stay safe and well. Catch you soon, Scotty. Justin, you catch us any time. Lovely to have you with us. A lot of people watching us during the day. 
Our highest audience for the morning pop-ups, 5,700 to date, and about uh, 40,000 of you have watched us since we started 17 programs ago. Um, so wonderful. Yes, it was my flat. She never set, stepped foot in it. My friend worked for the council as a leisure attendant. So there we are. Excellent. Before that, you would see him working on the trolleys in... Yes, in Asda, yes, absolutely, in Newton Mearns. That's right, Kareem. So there you go. Excellent stuff. Thank you for that. Wonderful. Um, right, folks. Now, have we all shared? I think we're getting lax at the sharing. Has anybody got a massive, massive group they could share to? So there you are. Massive group. Something absolutely huge so that everybody knows and can come and watch. It will build up organically. There's no doubt about it. But I also think the platform we're on um, has something to do with who sees it uh, and uh, how often, that sort of thing. Wonderful Fiona Kennedy is watching. Good morning, Fiona. And thank you for posting that lovely photo of your dear father, Callum. Um, last night, it was great just to remember him. What a top man, what a wonderful voice. As I say, I had both of you on the playlist on the Clyde Cayley on the radio, and your father was singing Loch Nagar, which, uh, as you know, is not for the faint-hearted. And then uh, you were singing just quite beautifully. She moved through the fair. So there we go. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, so the wonderful Fiona Kennedy watching, it's, it's a privilege to have you with us. Um, when I lived in my parents' house in Dumbarton, it was across the huge park. I was standing at the living room window during a thunderstorm late one night, a flash of lightning, and there was a person sitting on a bench. Five minutes later, another flash, nobody there. I'll never forget it. Well, they may have got up and walked away, Peter. Did you think about that? So you must have been near the old Kuehl School. I can remember I was to go to Kuehl School because my family were from Argyle, but I was getting a wonderful education where I was, so I just stayed. There you are. <laughs> Fantastic. Because Kuehl School, of course, was an Argyle school, and um, it started off in Kuehl House at South End, and Kuehl House went on fire. I'm trying to think when it went on fire. It was started by um, William McKinnon. Was it Sir William McKinnon, who was one of the big steamship companies? I think it might have been British India. And he had a big house down near Clachan in Campbelltown, uh, down the Kintyre Peninsula. And um, he'd set up Keel School at South End. And if you look over... The wall at South End, there's a big old stone wall of Keel House. And you can look over, you can still see the Port Corsair, the portico, the entrance to the old uh, Keel House, just under what was the Keel Hotel. So there you are, that looks like a, a 30s hotel. Wonderful at South End in Campbelltown. And South End, of course, is a stunningly beautiful part of the world, where the great Angus McVicar stayed. I knew him well. I knew his his brother, um, Kenneth McVicar, as well, who was the minister of Kenmore Parish in Perthshire. They were a fantastic family, the McVickers, lovely people. They had a sister called uh, Rona, the girl with the golden voice, who sadly died quite young. And uh, Rona was a mod medalist. Wonderful, the McVickers of South End, And their father, Angus John McVicar, was known as the Old Padre. He was originally, I think he'd come from, was it South Eust? Was it Eust? Or uh, was it Dura? Or did he work in Dura? I can't remember, but uh, that's that. Now, lightning, Peter Connolly. Have you ever seen fork lightning in Scotland? I never had until one night I was travelling on the motorway. I was going from Gurk to Glasgow. And uh, there was this terrific flash, clap of thunder, terrific flash, and it was like a, a, a crack in the sky, and it was just like nanoseconds. I just saw it, boom, 
justness like a like a road on a map. Josie Smith's watching. Thank you, dear Josie. Lovely to have you with us. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it was torrential rain, Scotty. Why would they be sitting there in the first place? Good point, Peter Conley. I was only asking. I was just doing my Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. So there you go. Just asking. Wonderful Brian Hall's joined us. Good morning, Scotty. Dinky you do, my good man. More sharing, guys. Come on now. We don't want the figures to drop. We need the figures up there. There should be millions watching this, certainly into the thousands, and uh, perhaps even hundreds of thousands. I say to you, uh, wonderful. Oh, I could share there. That would be rather good. Right. Uh, good morning, Dinky you do, my good man. Thank you to my good man. Lovely to have you with us. Right, there we are. Just getting shared now. I'll share to Scotty McClure, Global Radio and Television Presenter. And just get that off there right away. And then get some stuff off. Moira, Chico's mum is watching. Chico is a cocker spaniel. Did we have this discussion? Um, I'd said Springer, but he's a cocker, isn't he? And uh, Chico's mum is Moira. And Moira is watching right now. How fantastic. Can everybody share? Let's have a joint share right now. Do you see me doing a lot less looking down, guys? So there we are. I had a wonderful wheeze last night. Why didn't I just raise the other device up rather than looking down all the time? Does that look better from your point of view? Do tell. Are there any technical issues just watching this here that you say, well, that could be better and that could be better? I mean, obviously, we could have a lovely backdrop overlooking the whole of Scotland, that sort of thing. That will come. You know, someday we will get some pennies. And if anybody's feeling flush, then... Um, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClure, or one word. Uh, you can stick a pound in there. That would be fabulous because what I can do with it, I can do little bits of advertising. I mean, I've spent thousands and thousands of pounds on radio. Everything I made in radio was invested back into it. And then as many of you will know, when I um, you know, had, had another radio station, we were trying to save it and with a serious stewardship problem. There we are. So there we are. I shan't say any more about that, but with a serious stewardship problem and a lot of my money did not find its way into the radio station. So there you are, or into radio itself. It went somewhere else. So that was what, uh, that was what happened there. But, um, you know, onwards and upwards and to the future. And I think when, um, when the lockdown's over, we'll get some uh, some serious pennies together and do some great things because social media is outstanding. The opportunities are huge. There are new radio stations opening up all over the country. Scotty, could you play a wee song, says uh, Kareem. Yes, I could play you a wee song, Kareem. What would you like? Uh, let's think of something. Uh, what can we have? A wee song. What would you like, Kareem? You haven't made any suggestions. A wee Scottish number. We have a wee Scottish number. Do you want it on the pipe organ? <laughs> Shall we have it on the pipe organ? Um... Three number for you. That's what we like. Flower of Scotland. Oh, Flower of Scotland. How wonderful. The great 
Roy Williamson wrote Flower of Scotland, and Flower of Scotland, for the musicians among you, is based on the chorus of the Hebrew slaves from the opera Nabucco. So the Hebrew slaves would go, uh, speed your journey. Speed your journey. Da -de 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 Da dee dee dee. You hear it? So there we are. Wonderful, wonderful man. Um, there we are. Stopped listening to, and he mentions the radio station. You were the only reason to listen to it, says Paul Mack. How very interesting, Paul. I'm sure not, though. I live in Parliament now, Scotty, but as you know, I'm a Dumbarton man. Would you agree it's one of the most underestimated towns of Scotland with loads of interesting history? When I was a wee boy, Dumbarton was boom town. And my greatest teacher ever was a Dumbarton man. And I'd taught in the Vale of Leaven Academy, and then he went to Africa for 20 years. So there you are, a wonderful man. Um, and ended up as the head of music at our school. He, he was the head of music, the director of music uh, for Kenya in Africa. And uh, he was just the most outstanding man. And uh, he taught me music. Wonderful. Great character. And uh, so, so many wonderful stories. And he was from Dumbarton. And Denny's, the shipbuilders, were still going in the early 1960s. Now, Denny's, there were several shipyards in Dumbarton. And there was um, McAllister's Yard at Sand Point, now Sand Point Marina. Their, um, Denny's built huge ships. Um, you had uh, the engine builders. You had, um, you know, Denny's Sulzer engines. And their little tug was the second snark, which became a little cruise boat. I used to see her down. Um, she was owned by the Clyde Marine Motoring Company down at Greenock. Used to see the second snark sitting there. Wonderful. And she was built in Denny's in, I think, 1938, 1936 or 38. The Countess of Bredalbin was built in Denny's. All the Clyde steamers were built in Denny's. Well, most of them, not all of them. Um, some of them were built by Ingalls at Point House, that sort of, by uh, Ailes of Shipbuilding, all these other things. But the bulk of the Clyde steamers for David McBrain's and for uh, the Caledonian steam packet, the big turbines were all built at Denny's of Dumbarton. And, um, you know, their house, the original Denny house, was Helen's Lee, and that became Kiel School. So there you are. And the Denny's were uh, were just wonderful for the town. You've got the Denny Theatre now. You've got uh, a statue of, was it Peter Denny, in the town, that sort of thing. So Dumbarton is one of these Scottish towns. And although I'm not any separatist, I would like to see Scotland hanging on to its own money for a bit to get all these places back on their feet. So there you are. Very important. So very much underestimated. Many, many shipyards along the shore at Dumbarton. You had the big distillery, the fantastic uh, uh, distillery there, huge. You know, and I can remember that Ballantyne's can remember seeing all the sort of steam coming out the top of Ballantyne's Distillery. So there was big, big money in Dumbarton as well. And of course, I had the privilege of working on your radio, which is the station for Dumbarton. Uh, I believe it's now part of Nation Radio. So there we are. Um, oh, we got Flower of Scotland and D United are champions, says Mike McCabe. Yes, of course, Mike. Absolutely. I will just have a wee sip of Vero Grey. Uh, excellent, Scotty McLeary. Thank you. There we are, Kareem. We number for you. Uh, please play Beautiful Sunday, please. Oh, not during a weekday, Mike. Uh, Peter Connolly, The Cutthroat. What was The Cutthroat? What's that, Peter Connolly? Oh, sorry, I meant The Cutty Sark was built at Denny's. Yes, she was indeed. Um, we might bring her back to the Clyde. 
Uh, Gary McClure, I think you do. Good morning, Scotty. Today is the anniversary of Culloden, 1746, yeah. Let me see. Um, let's see what's going on. Time to remember the Jacobites, Jacobus, the followers of James. The oldest Jacobite was a man known as Aldubrich Peter Grant on 11th February 1824, aged 110, he passed away. So there we are. Um, so 110, so he lived till he was 18, 1824. It said about four gallons of whiskey was consumed at his funeral. At the graveside, a piper played the Jacobite tune, what would an effect for Charlie? So there we are. Uh, what would an effect for Charlie's Richt? Is that right? I I just know it as what would an effect for Charlie? What would an effect for Charlie? What would I draw the sword? There we are. Uh, the biggest bottling hall in Europe is Kilmallet in Dumbarton. Absolutely. Kelvin Allen. Thank you, do, and a very warm welcome. If you've all just joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got about another 10 minutes or so. There's no excuses for people not joining us, so I'll just put that up there and let you see it, guys, and that might bring one or two people on. But if everybody can keep sharing and share all day, share all week, it's still going up, as I say, our highest actual audience for the pop-up has been 5,600. Now, radio stations would give their eye teeth for an audience like that. It's very interesting. There's a television station that started up in Scotland, and apparently some of their audiences are as low as 4,000, and Scotty McClure can beat that with a tweet. I sent out a tweet once that went to 28,000 people. One tweet. And there's so much social media, but still, people have got time for Scotty McClue, because they know that I am a force for good in the media. Kareem Zachariah, Scotty McClue, what's the story of the Jacobite? People mention it, but I don't know what it is. Well, Kareem, um, Culloden in 1746, the Duke of Cumberland, who was the king's brother and was known as Stinking Billy, there had been two Jacobite risings, not rebellions, note, Risings, right? And this was the Scots rising up who were followers of James the Second, right? And James the Second had been a Catholic king because the throne had gone Catholic, Protestant, Protestant, Catholic all along. And um, James the Second had made a, a bid to get the crown back. And the people brought William of Orange over in 1688, who was married to James II's daughter, Mary, right? And um, he fought his father and negotiated an end to the absolute power of the monarch. So Parliament took over. That was your uh, start of constitutional monarchy, what was known as the Glorious Revolution in 1688. So they brought a Dutchman over, William of Orange. And um, there was a huge battle, the Battle of the Boyne in 1690. And James was defeated, but it was just a kind of skirmish. You know, it was a, a sort of welly in. And uh, it's been kind of glorified over the years. And uh, the Orange Lodge has been used by politicians to divide and rule. So the Orange Lodge doesn't quite realize it, but it gets used. And it's been getting used. I mean, somebody said to the Prime Minister when it was William Pitt, we feel that Ireland are getting a bit above themselves, Prime Minister. What are you going to do about it? I shall use the Orange Lodge to divide and rule. So it's used actually to weaken power um, and what have you. So that was that. 1603, you did the Union of the Crown. Scotland's a separate country. And um, James II's son, the young James, was known as the Old Pretender. His son was the young pretender, Charles Edward Stuart. 
and uh, he fought at the last Jacobite battle, which was 1746, against the Duke of Cumberland, Stinking Billy, who came up and they tried to wipe out the Scottish clans. And after that, Scotland was in lockdown. There's that word again. And tartan was banned. The playing of the pipes was banned. What have you. So that's the kind of story behind it. And of course, then you had the Highland clearances. So Scotland had been appallingly treated by, uh, by Westminster, well, Westminster, especially when they were part of it, right? But they didn't want to lose it again because Scotland had to devalue its currency to meet the English pound. You know, so Scotland was always ahead of its game. You'd had the Enlightenment and you'd got this wonderful, brilliant country leading an education. Scotland had four universities when England had two. So you'd got this kind of dichotomy um, between and the fighting for the crown. And the monarchy from 1603 is effectively a Scottish institution, you know, and uh, it's now three crowns, the crown of Scotland, the crown of England, and I believe the crown of Ireland is part of uh, the unionised crowns. So there we are. And Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who I will not hear a word against, is the present curator and custodian of the crown. So there we are. And Bonnie Prince Charlie took to the bottle, bless him, and he lived in Rome. And I've told this story a number of times, but I knew a man who knew a man who knew a man who knew Bonnie Prince Charlie very well. So there you are. Very, very interesting. Um, so, uh, so there's a bit of history, and I can tell you more about that story. Anyway, that's why the uh, the Jacobites, the followers of James, but the Scottish regiments. So I believe, after they've toasted the Queen, the Highland regiments sometimes have a toast in Gaelic to the King over the water. And uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie's buried in the Vatican in Rome. You can see his tomb. And I believe the late Queen Mother contributed towards restoring um, Bonnie Prince Charlie's tomb. He's known as King Carlos, King Carlos, Carlos Rex. And he's in the wall of the Vatican. Um, one of the most paranormal things still happening in Scotland is Overton Bridge and Dumbarton, where dogs jump off. 50 feet to their deaths. It's been blamed on the smell of minks down below, but never been proved. Very, very strange. I've heard of this. Um, was this all Scottish groups fighting each other in those days? The Scottish groups did fight. The Scottish nobles fought. The earls and the dukes. There were less dukes then and more earls. So you had the Earl of Argyll. And I think, did you have the Earl of Montrose? Or was he the Duke by that time? Can't quite remember. We'd need to check that. And the Bonnie Earl of Murray at Dune Castle. So the nobles, the Scots nobles did fight. That's what beggared the country. And there was famine. So we were kind of forced into the union with England in 1707. It was against the will of the Scottish people, but there was famine. People were just walking about and dying. And the last great patriot lived in um, East Lothian, in East Salton. And if you go to the church at East Salton, um, you will see the patriot uh, buried there. Fantastic. The last great patriot, the last member of the old Scottish Parliament. Yes, buried in East Sultan. Uh, so you can look all that up. It's wonderful, wonderful stuff. Um, John Marshall, thank you, Willie Drysdale. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. So it was the Scottish nobles fighting each other had beggared. But even going back to the 15, 1600s, they used to, you see, there was no telly, Karim. 
So you didn't have Emmerdale and Coronation Street and the 6 o'clock news. That would probably have put a stop to it if they could have stayed in and watched the telly. But they used to ride over to each other's property and just burn the whole place down for something to do after their tea. You know, they were, they were up to that. I mean, Penrith, you know, um, they, they, you know, the Scots had gone and, and burned down Penrith one night, so the Penrith guys just came over and set fire to Dumfries. You know, that sort of stuff. And that was going on in the 15, 1600s. So too much fighting all the time. Fortunately now, this concept of fighting is dying out. We still have terrible knife crime, but we need to get round to talking. Jaw, jaw, no war, war, right? People must learn to talk. Uh, thank you for that, Scotty McClure. Have a good day. I'm listening tomorrow. Dinky do. Karim Zakaria. Dinky do. But look up Andrew Fletcher of Salton, the Patriot. Andrew Fletcher of Saltoon, Saltoon Hall at uh, East Saltoon in East Lothian. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful part of the world. And uh, Callum McSwan's watching. Hello, Callum. Louise Harrell's watching. Dinky do, Louise. Lovely to have you with us, you top photographer and very talented lady. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, get sharing, everybody, because uh, I'm going to have to go in a few minutes. Uh, so spend the day sharing. It's been lovely to be with you. What a wonderful privilege. Am I not one lucky boy? So there you go. And um, have a great day. Uh, look after yourselves. We'll take uh, a couple more if you're coming to join us. We'll take a couple more. Wonderful, wonderful. About, uh, as I say, around about 40,000 of you have actually joined us um, in uh, terms. Andrew Fletcher, the Patriot. There you go, Karim Zachariah. I am not just an athlete. Yeah, I tell you. Uh, Overton Bridge is at Overton House, a huge mansion house built in the 1850s by the white chemical magnate of Glasgow. People should Google it. They should, Peter Connolly. Now, what house? See when you're going out the boulevard at uh, uh, Dumbarton there. What, um, you're up the top road, you're down the boulevard, and you've got the headquarters where the police are, right? In there, the lodges. What was that estate? Is that Bon Hill? by any chance. Yes. So do tell. I'm very, very interested in that. Um, over to now. So Peter Connolly, tell me about that. It's got uh, houses in it now. It's obviously some huge estate that was bought over its houses. And I think if I remember the police headquarter to what was Dunbartonshire Constabulary. Was that right? Dunbartonshire Constabulary, the police in Scotland were all separate police forces. So you had Argyll County Police, uh, Dumbartonshire Constabulary, Greenock Police. Um, now, what was Paisley? It was Paisley Constabulary. Have I got it right? And then it became Renfrew and Renfrew Constabulary. That was it. And then Renfrew and Butte, we had that for the police. And we had, uh, then you had the regional, you had Strathclyde Police and Central Police and Highland Police, Grampian Police, all these things. And now, of course, it's all Police Scotland. So there you are. Peter Connolly, DU. What's the DU? I'll tell you. Excellent. So the gatehouse is next to Dumbarton Police Station. Yes. What estate is that? That's what we're needing to look at. Fantastic. So lots of Googling for people to do today after watching Scotty McClure. If you're wondering what this is all about, we inform, we educate, and we entertain, hopefully. Uh, Soldiers Leap at Killy Cranky shows where the Redcoat Sassanach soldier jumped over 15 feet over the river to escape the chasing Jacobites. They were chasing the soldier, is that right? They were chasing the Redcoat and he had to leap. And I remember a lady that had a cottage down by the river 
at Pitlochre, and she said that very often through the night she could hear marching soldiers with fifes and drums marching past her house. What about that? Over to the state. We need good psychopaths to link them all. Psychopaths. Oh, I've met a few of these, Louise. I know they're psychopaths. You're quite right. Billy Hunter, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Excellent stuff. And Scotland is going to be on the up, guys. But we need people to stand up for Scotland. I wish I had a pound for every time I'd been invited to be a member of Parliament. But uh, do you think I should? What do you think? Uh, would it be my bag? They were. I also can remember when I used to ask people about uh, senior jobs and they'd go, not sure that's your bag, Scotty. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. But uh, certainly Parliament, I think that could be a big one. So there we go. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Uh, guys, uh, if you can follow me on Twitter, at Scotty McClue as well. If you've got uh, a Twitter account, follow me, at Scotty McClue. There's over 4,000 have joined us there already. And uh, also, um, there's several Facebook pages, so if you can like these. And the YouTube channel, subscribe to that as well. Scotty McClue's YouTube channel. The other end of the estate is in Milton, half a mile from Jackie Stewart's garage. I remember that, Peter Connolly. How fantastic, Jackie Stewart's garage. What a great man he uh, is, I'll tell you, Jackie Stewart. What a wonderful guy. So many great things we're hearing on here. That's why it's well worth popping up, guys. We've got the last one tomorrow. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Until then, this is Scotty McClue saying to every single one of you, look after your dear selves, stay safe, and stay fabulous. Dinky-doo!